This video is made in Bulu, Perth, on Wajak Noongar Buja. Kaya, welcome to episode 2 of Michelle from Perth, where I bring you some hell good science facts straight out of P Town. This time, the Bayswater Bridge. The infamous, the indestructible, the greatest 3.8 interstate, why do trucks keep crashing into it? The Baysy Bridge was born in 1910 when Cood Street and King William Street were sunk under the train line at Bayswater Traino. They maybe didn't dig down far enough and the low 3.8 metre clearance has been lopping the tops off trucks ever since. Here's one Bayswater cheese shop owner lovingly describing what the bridge does to its victims. It's an accordion, so it just sort of sort of compact it all, all the way back. Being little ones from where the top of the canopy is sort of peeled back like a sardine can, we just sort of love it as sort of a bit of an identity for Bayswater in a way. Last year it was hit 11 times, the year before that 10. At the time of filming in August 2020 the bridge has been hit six times this year. Despite its notoriety trucks can't get enough of Perth's biggest and best can opener. But why? Despite all the low clearance signs, people say they've heard truck drivers blaming GPS navigation for routing them under the bridge with no warning. And this has got to make you wonder, what's Google Maps doing to your brain to make you miss all the literal warning signs? And it doesn't stop it crashing into a bridge either. People have accidentally followed their GPS into lakes, off cliffs, into the ocean, straight into houses, up mountains and even off road into the high desert of Death Valley sometimes with tragic consequences. There are lots of things going on here. The brain is complicated. New research published in Nature earlier this year looks at how Google Maps messes with the strategies your brain uses to navigate and how over-reliance on GPS can have long-term negative effects. There are two strategies the brain uses to get us places. The first one is called the spatial memory method, which uses the hippocampus, a region deep inside the brain that's involved with memory and navigation. When we go somewhere new, the hippocampus adds that place to a cognitive map. A cognitive map is basically your own inbuilt navigation system, and it holds places you've been positioned in relation to each other, just like a physical map would. You draw on your cognitive maps when you need to devise a route from point A to point B. Navigating using the spatial memory method basically involves paying attention to where you're going. It's flexible, meaning we can reroute at any point along the way by referring to our cognitive map of where we are in relation to where we're headed. The other strategy of navigation is called the stimulus response method, which doesn't involve the hippocampus at all. It's more like following a list of directions. At the roundabout, take the first exit. In this example, seeing the roundabout is the stimulus and turning off at the first exit is your response. Stimulus response navigation is useful if you're going somewhere new that you haven't already built a cognitive map of. Since you're just following step-by-step -step instructions, your brain really doesn't know where you are, so you can't plan alternate routes on the fly. Most of the time, we're relying on a combination of spatial memory and stimulus response methods. For example, by following instructions to a new place and paying attention so we can find our way back. That is, until Google Maps gets involved. Getting somewhere by following robot instructions from your phone lets your brain rely entirely on stimulus response navigation. And since your hippocampus isn't being used, it kind of just turns off. So suddenly your brain really isn't processing your surroundings. This might go some way to explaining how you could end up wedging a truck under a bridge. What's more, there's worse news for GPS followers. Over-reliance on step-by-step -step GPS navigation means your hippocampus isn't as active as it should be, and use it or lose it is especially true when it comes to your brain. Studies have found that people who regularly googs it have less activity and less grey matter in their hippocampi. They also score worse on a test using diagnosing mild cognitive impairment, which often precedes Alzheimer's disease, showing how GPS can actually damage your brain. It's not all bad news though. If you want to boost your grey matter and improve your spatial memory navigation, all you have to do is use maps less. And hopefully by keeping your hippocampus in action, you'll be more aware of what's around you, like road signs, the ocean and cliffs. Anyway, back to the bridge, and I'm sorry to say its days are numbered. Bayswater Traino is getting an upgrade as part of the new Morley to Ellenbrook train line, and the new bridge is going to have a clearance of 4.8 metres. PTA spokesman David Hines spoke the words in some of our hearts when he compared the bridge to the Berlin Wall. He said, perhaps we'll have to save bits of the old bridge and say, this was the bit that was hit by a truck in 2014. It's an icon, we should all be proud of it. As for me, I just hope they'll start building bigger trucks so the Bayesie can rise to strike again.